So hi there guys, my name is Isal Hoffman, I'm a lifestyle chef and again with me today is of course Matt Carter. Uh, we're going to be talking about avocados, of course, specifically the army avocados. And as, uh, as always, Matt, uh, we're talking about profiling, taste profiling. And this is the follow-up episode with regards to our previous conversation. So obviously there's lots to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So we've obviously come a long way since that last conversation and what we've done. So we've looked at different things we can do to influence the flavors that we find in the avocado. Um, that's the one side of things. And then drilling down really a bit deeper into what those flavors really are and how do those flavors get affected through the season uh, even sometimes we notice in the same box you'll have slightly different flavors and that's what we're looking at today okay well we've got about six very yummy looking avocados right here in front of us so explain to me what we're going to do and where we're going to start right so we have what we did was we looked at the the avos hanging on the tree so what normally normally happens it gets picked when it's green yeah. sent to pack house ripen then sent to ripen ready your stores what they did this time was left it on the tree a little bit longer so okay. to different degrees of maturity mm -hmm. so we have one that was was picked green and then ripened at home okay. um, at, at my house and then one that was picked at 50 percent maturity and 75 percent maturity so left on the tree mm -hmm. to mature a little bit longer yeah um, so what we want to do today is have a taste between the three and see which one really does have more complexity maybe mm -hmm. maybe some good flavors and today we've also um, looked at our flavor wheel and we've developed that slightly as well to to help us a little bit with that so we're also going to start to pull that in okay and for viewers at home it actually looks like that so pretty so colorful clearly you spent the whole evening last night preparing <laughs> yeah. these i mean uh, we're going to be talking about the nuttiness the spice very vegetal and of course the off notes yeah so fortunately i haven't uh, experienced that but i think that will be our next chat is when we talk okay. about off notes what would off notes be i don't know and that's what i'm excited to find out okay. so like i said i've never had a bad avocado yet but yeah. sometimes you'll um maybe taste something and you're just like oh that's not right yeah. so maybe it's a texture maybe it's okay. um oils that have potentially i don't know um oxidized a little bit okay. so we're going to look at that we're going to try to find some avocados that don't taste nice and mm. start to pull that in so the idea with a flavor wheel is to look at it you'll see dairy mm. and within that dairy um, part of the wheel we'll be able to say well butter salted butter cream milk oh. and then look into that so it will start to expand out of that okay. wheel so that nucleus in the center is mm -hmm. spice but what spice is it cardamom cloves uh, turmeric whatever it is so it'll start to go out and then off notes we don't know so oily fishy are some of the notes that we have heard but uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll find those not fishy, right? hopefully <laughs> not but yes. but it's good to have a holistic view of the avocado of course of course so um yeah i'm actually quite intrigued to you know maybe i get to taste something i yeah. i haven't tasted you know in a previous tasting before and reason for that is you know i actually asked uh, dr adams a while back as well how far can you manipulate the process so that you can make sure that the consumer at the end of the day has got to get that perfect ultimate vrv experience so i really hope that we get to capture that on video today so uh, i think let's start let's go so i think we're going to start with the 75 percent. so this is the one okay. that was or should we start at 50 what do you let's start well, I, I tend to believe we leave the best for last okay so i think we're going to start with the green then because we don't yeah. know um okay. what, what's really happened i think this is what was picked off the tree put into a box on the farm and sent to me oh. so this is going to be quite an experience for both of us i think so let's have a little taste of this okay. and see what we can what we can pick up so just for viewers at home currently all of these avocados are right correct yeah um it's just when they were taken off the tree and how they got to this point of being perfectly ripe, of course. That's right. And then if there are any flavor differences, so if there is, oh, that's always great. Oh, look at that. The <laughs> so perfect that, viola. That first moment always. every time. You're like, oh, that's <laughs> that's amazing. First, it's like you fall in love for the first time. It's like, oh, well, I can just indulge into this. So we can have a little taste of this. So this, this mm. is picked green off the tree, put into a box, mm. and then sent to us. Um, and already, like we always say, there's no stringy fibers in this flesh, which 
you know, it's something I always pick up immediately when I cut open, you know, any fruit per se or even some vegetables because that's sort of going to dictate what you can do with that texture of that fruit or vegetable. So this, of course, I always claim to say the obvious, the perfect uh, vegan or vegetarian cream, especially if you want to cut out dairy. So I find it quite uh, exciting that we get to compare it with dairy. Yeah, I think we did pick up a lot of dairy mm. notes. Intense texture, creaminess. Yeah, but then oh. there's also... Uh, some of our team picked up a salted butter, some unsalted butter okay. in texture, but also flavor. So we're picking that on the flavor profile as well. Okay. Uh, so yeah, very good for vegans, uh, making chocolate mousses. Yes. Yeah. And of course, just to confirm, we are currently, well, not today, not going to be adding anything to this. We're going to no. just keep it clean, keep it simple, so we can really indulge into that natural flavors yeah. that we can find in this yeah. fruit. So what's the process again? We smell it first. So, so we're going to smell in the skin and on the yes, spoon. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Of course, this is, of this is all mine. I get to indulge in all of this. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay. So it's got that, that, that note we picked up last time. You were speaking about golf courses and... Oh yeah, I gave it a little bit of weight that I might be like, you know, a fan of a little bit of golf. Yes. But then we drilled down, we said maybe a, a fresh cut grass. Yes. And so that's going to fit on our flavor wheel. We're going to put that into, into here, that fresh cut grass lawn. Okay. Um, we, we always said, like we said last time, that green, but we, yeah. we need to try to find what green that smells fresh like. Elements. Fresh, yes. yeah. There's also a bit of herb there. I'm thinking like a parsley or a sage. More parsley. Mm, more subtle. Yeah, I'm very not going to say yeah. it jumps at me and no, say, oh, yay, I smell like a herb. <laughs> I can't say I'm smelling that. No. Okay, I'm okay. just going to dig in. On the spoon, give it another little whiff. Oh, this is perfectly right. Look at that. Yeah, this is very, very ready to eat. And of course, another, another differentiating factor of a VR is, of course, the shelf life. I mean, this is quite ripe fruit, but still, there's no funny spots or anything no. like that. It's, it's no, just it's a perfect, perfect, perfect abo. So delicious. <laughs> so delicious. That creamy texture is something mm. that will get you every time. And the thing with the VR is like it stays. That creaminess mm. stays in the mouth a lot longer than what we've picked up from other avocados yeah. varieties that's out there, right? Yeah. So I'm picking up that butter straight away. Yeah. Mouthfeel and flavour. Mm. Um subtly coming through that there's a there's a warm spice, a turmeric sort of sort mm. of flavour mm. coming through off of that. Yeah. Um and then if we look on the the nuttiness, it's a sweet nutty, so we head it, mm -hmm. I'm heading towards the macadamia, yeah. cashew, yes. that sort yeah, of range. Definitely. So you get definitely. that dry nutty, if you think about a raw almond, yeah. that's that rustic sweetness, mm -hmm. where this has a lot more of a pronounced sweet nuttiness, mm -hmm. where you hit those macadamias, um, cashew nut sweetness. One can clearly see Matt's doing this on the daily basis because he's just all got this comparison. It's not that, it's this. And I'm just like, oh wow, it's just delicious. <laughs> and I'm still not sick of avocado. I've had so much and I can still eat every day. Oh wow. So I want okay. to move over to the 50% now. Okay. Um, so this was green. It was ripened at home in my kitchen. Obviously in these cold winter days, that took a lot longer than mm. we expected. So is there anything that you can summarize this one with? Something that, uh, you know, sort of stood out the most for you that we can characterize this one with? Uh, it's definitely that sweet nuttiness okay. and the butteriness. Those okay. are the two So that's sort of the ones we would be looking for then in going to the 50% one. Yeah, so we'll look for that. And it should, well, we're going to see what it does. But I'm, mm. if I were to try and imagine what it's going to do, mm. it's going to become more intense okay. and slightly more complex. Yeah. So we might find some underlying notes. Um, there is a surprise in the 75 Ooh, that I, I found surprises. last time yes. and I couldn't work it out and I sent Zander a message I'm saying this is what I'm tasting and I was very excited mm. and we couldn't believe it so we'll see if it still rings true today but uh, hopefully there's a surprise. Well, hopefully we are lucky and we get a surprise today so over to number 50 percenter. Yep so this here was uh, left on the tree to ripen a little bit more and then finished ripening at home. And of course, the beautiful dark pebbly skin of the Biavi is always something that stands out. So often people think this might be a, ooh, 
every single time. I lost all my words. <laughs> every single that. time. That is That's so unfair. perfect, yes. A lot of people on the shelf, they always say, but you know, I looked at this avocados and these seem a little bit overripe because they you know, are so dark. I mean, that is really, apart from the beautiful Viavi sticker that showcases, this is exclusive to Woolworths and this is what they look like. They are perfectly ripe. You know, just by looking at the skin already, you know that you are going to be consuming a Viavi. Now this one already, I pick up on the color. Yeah. It's a bit more intense yellow. It is. And then you got that nice. Yeah, because look at that. Green solid line on the side there yeah i do find a difference just like by looking at the flesh already it, it yeah. looks a little bit different to me more intense like you said yeah mm. and i think a lot of people are saying in that box that they get this inconsistency mm -hmm. and we're not sure and i think what we're trying to work out is do we leave the ever on the tree a little bit longer and yeah. then ripen to get more complexity and develop more consistency mm -hmm. um which I think is a great idea. And I'm personally of the opinion that mm -hmm. variety is the spice of life. So yeah. I like variety in my box. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Consistency is great and consistent quality is imperative. Mm -hmm. But uh, variety within flavors and colors, I think is great. Well, the expert has spoken. So <laughs> let's start smelling this one. Yeah. The grassiness, the lawn, the freshness is a lot more, I pick it up a lot quicker here. Where yeah, I had to sort of was... take two sniffs here in order to really pick it up. Yeah, it is more prominent here. Mm. A little bit more muted in the 50%, yeah. uh, the, the green. So there is more of a concentration of oils as the yeah. avocado started to develop oils and the moisture mm. content is coming down. Okay. And of course you were talking about that green line earlier. Sorry, and I sort of rudely interrupted you there. Yeah, it's just beautiful. Um, See, so look, if you compare it to the other one, the green line is just starting to subdue a bit. Oh, yes. It's yeah. like there's a bigger contrast with the yeah. yellowy, more intense, um, and then the green side of things. Okay. I do find this a bit more buttery. It's also got that more buttery look almost. Mm. Eh? Sure. Intense sweetness, if you do mean. So right up front, there's a, a a syrupy sweetness. I'm so surprised. I mean, it's the same fruit. They both ripe, but this one is just so much more wow in the mouth. Yeah. Almost. So that complexity we're talking about. Yes. yes. And that the, the intense butteriness afterwards as well. I mean, I've already swallowed it down and it's still in my mouth. So yeah, I yeah. like that too. I'm and it is the same varietal. It came from the same box. Yeah. Um, just different times allowed to be on the tree and that's that's really what's created that big change mm. between the the product mm. i can't stop eating mm. this is lovely mm. i'm finding that sweetness level really nice and high can i be cheeky and say that i would find this at this stage compared to these two the perfect one to add into smooth desserts and things like that because it's got that natural sweetness already sure Mm. Yeah. Compared to the other one, of course. Yeah, I, th I think the other one, if you put it into like a guacamole spread mm. on toast, I mean, yeah. that was so delicious and soft and muted, and it would really. But it needed a little bit of a. You can zoosh it up a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. So there, there's potential to zoosh it up a little bit with this one. You almost don't want to zoosh it up. This you eat it by itself. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> straight up like the skin. That. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yes. much sweetness. I'm really impressed with that sweet level, um, and I don't know where that would fit uh, if it's a. Uh, I need to add another category here. at home again and I'm just going to sort of go a little bit closer that they can see and then you can sort of run through that just quickly again for us just as a recap. Yeah, so we've got the, the nuttiness and we're yeah. trying to work out what nuts are in there. So we'll start yes. to fill that in with pen. Yeah. So we spoke about macadamia, we spoke mm. about the, the cashew nuts, yeah. hazelnuts, walnuts. There's so many and each nut tastes so different. So yeah. we start to put those in the dairy where we spoke about the butters, the creams, mm. the milk. There's um, the dairy over there. Especially some of the other varietals, it's more of a milky dairy, whereas mm. this here is more of a, a butter and a cream. 100%, 100%, um, yes. Then we've got the spice, and you've got, you got two types of spice. You've got a warm mm. spice, so yeah. you've got cinnamon, cardamom, clove, etc. Mm. And then you've got a hot spice, so if you think about chilies, yes. uh, black cracked pepper, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and then the vegetal, which is that grassy notes, etc. Uh, grassy, herbaceous, all those mm. kind of notes. And then, of course, afterwards, then we sit down again. So afterwards, we'll fill these in, and we will also publish this 
then uh, you know, with the other cons, and so yeah. the people at home can also compare. Because I always say it's a lot easier to compare when you look at the one and you look at the other one. And we will also take a photo, of course, of yeah. these to show. But this was the first one, and here is the this beautiful taste profile ring. The results, of course, as well as the second one, as well as of course the last one, which I'm most excited yeah. to taste. Yeah, this is incredible. That's why I put it so close to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then uh, uh, just quickly while we're on this, hmm. this is a. a, a, a it's going to be a, a long time developing. Yeah. We're two, three years. Each season is so different. We're working on the ready spoken to Zanda and the team about what if we taste ever from one tree on one side of the farm and then go to as far away from that tree mm -hmm. as possible on the other side of the farm and taste ever from that tree. Yeah. What differences are we playing there? Mm -hmm. um, obviously the off notes, which I'm not excited to do, but simultaneously excited to fill that part of it because we haven't really explored that. Mm -hmm. um, so to start to develop those flavors. And I think this is a two, three year project. But yeah. When it's done, we'll have the first proper flavor wheel for avocado, which is something really exciting and worth talking about. Wow. First Not to wait any longer. Profile wheel for avocados. Now the VRV team always have a first for everything, yeah. right? They're very good at what they do. <laughs> Can't blame them. <sighs> so excited for these. Okay, so this is the 75%. Yes. And this was when I was doing some work with it earlier. Mm -hmm. Some real interesting stuff coming through. Um, I think it was just based on the complexity of it. There we are. Oh, wow. Never ceases to fail. That is so perfect. It's like when you cut the flesh, you can see the matured oils in there, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, you can see, and you, you, you pick it up in your mouth a mm. lot more with that's that. What, that's that what I can't creamy. wait for, because like I said, I, I, I love to mix this up with a little bit of unsweetened almond milk and replace any dairy cream with this because sure. of the intense, intense creaminess. So this might just be... The cream of the crop. The cream of the cream. <laughs> yeah. The cream of the cream. <laughs> the double thick cream. <laughs> there we go. Okay, yeah. This okay, is this is working. First we smell it. Mm. I must say the second one was more fresh, that intense yes. freshness, that lawn sort of smell. Where this one's more like a matured It's a subtle smell. I don't know. It is. It is Might subtle. Might be my nose. I mm. mean, you're the expert here. <laughs> um, it is subtle. Mm. It's very soft. It's very delicate. Yeah, that's a um, really good explanation. But there's also more complexity. So if you look under those layers, where the others, it was very obvious. It's mm. cut grass. Yeah. It's very obviously butter. Mm. Here, there's more subtle layers. Okay. Um, beneath the, the the aromas. And. Uh, the aroma in this case for me comes out a lot more in the flavor so if we okay. taste it now okay um now we need see. to smell it on the spoon first yeah. Matt. yes you're right thank you Mark. i do find the flesh even more buttery yeah. just by scooping it out than the Super second one Super soft mm. very interesting Oh wow. So that sweetness is toned down a lot now. Yes. So you've got that bright sweetness from that 50%, which yes. is coming through that um, sugar cane syrupiness. Mm. Now that's toned down. And for me, it's replaced with a very light sweetness. So I was trying to work out, I haven't really put my I'm finger on I'm going to have to have it. another bite. But I, <laughs> I think, you know, if you make fresh blueberry muffins and you take those berries, you bite into that berry and it's like that jammy, gooey mm. blueberry. I can taste that now. That's what I was mm. picking up, which I didn't expect to find in avocado. But you've got that fruit. Avocados are fruit, berries are fruit. Mm. Um, is known for its blueberries. They have the berry festival there. So it's not far beyond the realm of imagination that there is that blueberry sort of flavor coming through there. Mm. Wow. There's also a hint of bitterness in this which I don't think is a bad thing. Yeah, you always gonna... have to get it on your tongue, right? Yeah, but if you think about a great chocolate, great coffees, you do have those hints of bitterness, mm. which you expect. Even a great whiskey or a great beer, you're going to have those hints of bitterness, yeah. and it brings through balance. And I think last time we spoke about the spider diagram, where you had to overlay the limb and blend yes. them to try to find balance. Yeah. 
I don't need to do this with it uh, or do that with this particular product because I find it naturally balanced. Wow. Okay. What do you think? Am I off with the fairies here? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I'm just on top of my thinking. For instance, if I had to bake a dessert with a 50 percenter as well as the 75 one, like you say, you, you'll do something like a blueberry or an apple crumble or something fruity, yet sweet with this one, but you almost want to go the chocolatey route with yes. this one. You know, it's like a caramel something and you want to add mm. a dash or a dollop of cream, you know, go for this one. Or, for instance, tomorrow um, I'm actually baking a, a sticky chocolate pudding where I'm adding some Biavi to it to add that sort of decadence. And I think this particular one would have then been my pick yeah. if I had the privilege to say which basically Biavi can I use for that. Yeah. So, yeah, that is so interesting. I mean... And yet, for the average consumer at home, they might think an avo is just an avocado. Yeah. And today we're sitting here with just the RV avocados, unlike the previous time. And just, you know, they taste all so different and they look different and the color and the complexity is also different. And that, that's based on the maturity of the trees. And yeah. like I said, we're going to look at tasting avos from different sides of the farm. Yeah. Um, and as, I think as long as you've got consistency and quality, Mm. You're doing you're doing a great job. If you start to go into cons inconsistent quality, that's where we, we start to have troubles. And that's I mean, the RV, every single ever we cut open, mm. we stopped and had a good look at it. And the color and the smoothness and the small wow. small seed, more fruit, um, mm. it really blew us away. And um, but then your taste, you have those subtle differences, and you are gonna you're gonna get that. Um, but do we want to have um, more complexity? Or more simple, and I think that's where consumer or consumers start to drive the yeah. drive the argument of it. Yeah, and the sense of what would they use the avocado for? I know yeah. on average people always just add it to a toast or this or that, yeah. but I mean we started or the guys from the we started this whole process to sort of say, but an avo is more than just that average ingredient to do you can do a lot more yeah. with it, and that's why it fits in with the coffees, the whiskies, the wines, the chocolates. We mm. spoke about the chocolates the previous time as well. So yeah, I'm very excited for that. So is there anything else that we sort of need to summarize everything we did and taste it here today with? Um, what is sort of that take home message that you can give us? I think we spoke about it last time and I'll reiterate it to mm. A, taste your product yeah. and get to understand the flavor notes and the flavor profiles. We're going to start to make this available through through your, your page and yeah. through the guys on the farm um, and then give us feedback as well. I'd love to hear what other people are tasting. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be in my own echo chamber and just hear my own flavor notes. So mm -hmm. for anyone else and be creative, be wild. Tell yeah. me if you, uh, a lot of times smell and taste is linked to memories, often childhood yeah. memories. But I remember I lived on a, on a farm in Mozambique for a while. Mm -hmm. Every morning we got pineapples and cashew nuts. So I got very much involved in that, um, eating the, the, the pineapple and the cashew nuts and any time I smell pineapple, immediately I'm on the farm again in Mozambique yes. and do what I was doing there. So um, often we'll smell something, it'll take us back, it'll transport us back. Mm. And I think smell and taste is such a good time machine because yes. I can travel back in time straight to that farm in Mozambique when I smell pineapples. So it would be great to have people's mm. interpretation of what they smell. Maybe that can of. even be a fantastic consumer competition for the next yeah. season to say like be RVs and be mark a certain batch a certain way and we like give us your feedback. You know, I think it can also add to uh, your sort of results and things like sure. that. Yeah. And start to develop a community community yes. driven project, yeah. yeah. So there quality. you have it guys, the RV tastes different in different ways and Matt of course is the expert, I was just the one that got to taste all of the avocados today and trust me after this video I'm going to have to finish the rest because he has to go home <laughs> in a little bit. Matt thank you so much, thank you. I'm excited to of course be filling these in and like I said we will publish the results of course, sure. well Matt will publish his results because clearly he is the expert on these and not myself and uh, yes that's it from us. Uh, you know, every Thursday is, of course, VRV Thursdays. Join the evolution and be on the lookout for that fantastic sticker exclusive to Woolers because this is, of course, the cream of the crop. Matt, thank you so much for your time thank you. and thank you to everyone at home watching today and we'll see you for another VRV season next year. Mm -hmm.